Welcome to another edition of Popcorn Bucket List, the show that we started doing weekly because, well, we just didn't have anything better to do. <laughs> well, at least I did. You, you have a family you care for. I, I was bored. And so I forced you to spend more of your right. free time with that's me. That's all right. So I love that's, talking movies. So. That's, that's, how, that's how you make friends, kids. You make a show. You, you sneak a co-host and tell them it's only going to be monthly. It's only going to be monthly. And then once you have them reeled in, you, sne- you make it weekly, and now they have to hang out with you yes. weekly. You yep. have, they have to. Uh, it's a long-term plan <laughs> that I've been enacting for two years now. And I can't get on my contract, so. Yeah, we, can't, we can't get them out. Yeah. We got them. We got them. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we are going to go straight into some weekly previews here. Uh, let's just get things started with the one that's coming out today, the day this episode drops, on HBO Max. It's the movie called Kimmy. Kimmy. Uh, this is starring Zoe Kravitz. Directed by Steven Sodenberg. Um, it, it, throughout the trailer, it asks the question, what if? What if your whole life was being recorded? What if you were being spied on? I'm like, isn't that? that that's now, right? That's what's <laughs> like, happening that's, right now. Like, that's already happened. Like, did I miss yeah. something There's here? There's points where it looks super futuristic and then, like, not at all. Yeah. Because it's like, ah, it's just normal. It, it's trying to do the whole, like, Am- Amazon helper, Google, like, like helper thing, those those little things you like, you like ask him like, "Hey Google, whatever." Yeah, you know, yeah. You're trying kinda, to be futuristic, kind of here to 2010. Yeah, like that's yeah. Like this would have been a, a bonkers huge, movie yeah. 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the main plot goes into like the main character. I I don't know exactly what she does. I don't know if it's really explained. She's she like. like a- she like reviews other people's streams. Yeah, she's like uh she like records their audio, not records, but like interprets their audio yeah. or something. And she's so she's like going through like her work day, like resolving them, and then like one, she thinks she hears like a murder in the background. Yep, and like nobody believes her. Premeditated, premeditated murder. murder. Make because she, she makes it a point to say it was a premeditated, premeditated murder, which I don't know how you can tell that. Unless the guy killing her seriously said, I've been thinking about this for weeks. <laughs> yes. I premeditated I this. I premeditated <laughs> this. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the, it's got a good cast. And I, I like almost all the actors in it. But I just don't know if the story yeah. is going to hold up. There's a reason it went straight to HBO. <sighs> uh, sorry. Kravitz. No. Um, but coming out that Friday, uh, let's start with the easiest one. I, I mean, really, I, it's not a great weekend for looking at no. it here. But uh, Black Light, yet another Liam Neeson action movie. Said it before, I'm going to say it again. I just don't know what else to say about these. <sighs> They're just doing it on autopilot. Yeah, yeah. He's. I think he has fun making them. He so has he to, doesn't right? mind doing them. And I it's mean, not like you're not going to win anything. A, a chunk of people will see it. Yeah. And that's totally fine with him. Yeah. I, I like him. But that's just, that's, and I think that's the only reason why any of these work. Because if I close my eyes and I hear Liam Neeson's voice, everything he says sounds cool. Yeah, everything yeah. he could say, like I got off the trolley and baked a cake. But if you say it in a Liam Neeson voice, where he's like, I got off the trolley and baked a cake, like it sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's just I think it yeah it runs off that fuel. Yep. And I I feel like if it was any other actor. This would probably be a lower, like, B oh, movie. way lower budget. Like, yeah, and it just would be, oh, it's that movie. Yeah. But because it's Liam Neeson, it gets that just little bit of, bow, little bit of push-up. Also coming out that same weekend, Death on the Nile. Now, okay, I, I've been thinking about this for weeks, and I've been preparing this statement here, so just give me a minute. I'm looking at the camera here. I'm looking at you, Kenneth Branagh. You are you're starring in this. You are directing it. This is the second one of these detective Agatha Christie novels you are doing. Um, Ryan, you and I know there's a saying in Hollywood, one for you, one for me sort of thing, right? Yep. Uh, a couple of years ago, Kenneth Branagh had the chance to direct the Artemis Fowl movie based off the popular book franchise. One of the few book franchises I ever got into <laughs> and really, really loved. You done screwed up, Kenneth Branagh. You have made an enemy out of Nick Dahlhoff because you screwed up that movie so hard. And I know you schlubbed through that movie. You you showed up on set. You said action. You set the camera down. You played on your phone. You said cut, and that was it. You got your paycheck and ran so that the studio would fund your stupid Death on the Nile movie. This movie, 
better be great. I'm if I do not leave this movie thinking it is Oscar caliber worthy, then your trade off and screwing me over and the Artemis fans everywhere will be for nothing. So, sir, this better win Best Picture for the next three years. That's right. It better be so good that they renominate it two years from now and it still wins. Or I'm coming after you, Brana, because you screwed up one of the few books I actually got into as a kid and screwed it up hard. One of, not exaggerating, worst movies I have ever seen was the Artemis Fowl movie. And this was during the pandemic. This was one of the only things I looked forward to. During one of the darkest times in human history, you made it darker, sir. So if you screw up this movie, if you kill off Gal Gadot in this movie, I will hunt you down. I will go Liam Neeson on your butt. <sighs> Sounds like you have some strong feelings about this movie. <sighs> I think I just left my body there for a second. <laughs> what happened? Also coming out that same weekend is Marry Me. Uh, this is a theater's release starring Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer and Lopez? Owen Wilson. Um, what are you doing? Jennifer Lopez? Is that that South Park bit? Uh, there yeah. we go. Okay. Jennifer Lopez? See, I can only see it from a weird <laughs> angle, so I just see like his fist. So I wasn't really sure what he was doing at first. But, okay, so, yeah, it's a, it's a bit on South Park. Okay, but, yeah, talk about crazy plots. So Jennifer Lopez is playing a super mega hit pop star, much like her real life, Yep. where they've got this whole thing planned where she's going to get married to her boyfriend, who's also a, a, a pop star or a, a rapper or something like yeah. that, uh, on stage live in a concert for their Marry Me tour. The whole, like, album is called yep. Marry Me. She finds out. Literally, as she's going on stage, uh, that he's been cheating on her. And with her assistant. With her assistant. Ooh. Which, like, come on, man. So, yeah, she's obviously distraught, um, reasonably so. Yep. Um, and she's just like, I'm going to do something crazy. Owen Wilson, who's, like, a high school math teacher, like, his daughter and his friend, like, bring him to this concert just so he, like, gets out. And they, like, hand him one of the posters just saying, like, marry me, which is, again, the title of the album. Yep. And she's just like... Yes. Yes. And you and the. She just takes him on stage, and they get and they do the marriage ceremony yeah. thing on stage. And then it's like, uh, now what do we do? They're like, well, you got to go through with it, otherwise, it just looks like a publicity stud. And yeah. it's like, it it almost tries to play her off as like the bad guy. Like you brought me into this. I'm like, dude, you said yes. Yeah. You got into this you, too. It takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. And you made the steps too, Mister Wilson. Yeah. yeah. All crooked nose and everything. Yeah. Yep. Coming out that same weekend is Big Bug. Uh, this is a Netflix release. Um, I believe this was a French movie oui. that got dubbed to English. We. Oui. Um, it is yet another AI goes bad story. I, at first, as I was watching this trailer, I was like, okay, it's AI gone bad, overtaking humanity kind of thing. Um, I was like, so what are they going to do different here? that we haven't seen before. Cause we've seen so many of those. We just saw one earlier this week, yeah. which you're going to talk about later, yeah. by the way, foreshadowing. But then I realized, Oh, it's French. We, they are more. <laughs> artsy. This is artsy, but also how do I put this? Um, well, it's rated R Yep, to say the least. They, in this movie, at least are more, why don't you, why don't you just take it away, right? Imagine this is when I watch a trailer, I think it looks awesome. I can't wait to watch it. Very colorful. Imagine uh, Dr. Seuss, like the cat in the hat, mixed with a little bit of like Terminator from the main bad guy, just from what we could see of him. And like Smart House almost, the old Disney Channel that, movie. Yeah, that but, all into one. With some, like, adult themes in there. There we go. That's what I... And I think it looks awesome. And especially because it's dubbed over and they kind of talk a little. Yeah. It's yeah. All, it looks cool. Um, uh, Also coming out that weekend, I Want You Back. This is an Amazon Prime release. A rom-com starring Charlie Day and Jenny Slate. Uh, feels like this should be mentioned. This is essentially Valentine's Day kind of weekend. Yeah, same. Yeah. Because... Yeah, Valentine's Day like lands on a Monday, so you really can't say next weekend's gonna be it. So it's 
it's yeah. it's kind of it's, it's kind goofy. of goofy. Yeah, it's a weird Valentine's Day weekend thing. So a little bit more lovey dovey if you've yep. noticed uh, I, some of our preview here, yeah. but not the most I've seen. To be no, honest. and like Charlie Day is in it. He looks hilarious as yeah. always. Jenny um, Slate's always funny in my yeah. book. So like it's gonna definitely it'll be a you know a rom com, but I more on the comedy side I think mm-hmm. than the romantic side whereas I think marry me might lean more on the romantic side yeah. than the comedy side it'll still yeah. be funny but uh, you know and then finally coming out that weekend the sky is everywhere this is an Apple TV plus also limited theater release so I don't okay. know depending where you live maybe it'll it'll be released in your area or not but um I gotta say I really like what Apple TV plus is doing I don't know if we've talked about this enough but Netflix kind of throws everything it has at the wall and just sees what sticks. It feels like Apple in all their content is a little bit more picky choosy. They're going for not the far out there, but something that's kind of pushing boundaries okay. like this movie, I think. But the interesting th- thing about this movie is it's got almost cartoonish elements to it. It does. There's points does. where like the scene kind of animates around them. And there's like musical elements because she's like a big uh, band player, yep. and they're like it looks like they're doing like singing and dancing routines almost, but almost like, like a spice of like La La Land, where kind it's of, like yeah. like because there's that scene where they're like floating up in the air yeah. playing music, and it's like what? But I, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of into it. I'm kind of yeah. into it. And like that one scene where like the flowers are coming, but it's just people's arms with green yeah. stuff and flowers on them. Yeah. So like it looks cool. It's like a very um, colorful metaphor. Yeah, and this one, I think the rom-com debate is definitely going to be way more romantic and heartbreaking, and they talk about grief and love mm-hmm. in the trailer, so it's like this is going to be a heavy, heavy yeah. one, I think. Yeah. But with all the, oh, music, oh, dancing, oh, singing, like, I don't know. It'll be cool. Um, And with that, that is everything coming out, or at least the major releases coming out this weekend. The big a dogs. place you can check these out if you live in this area is the Marshall Six Theater. Um, they still have $5 Tuesdays as usual, and they also have $6 Thursdays. Uh, that is for faculty and students of, I believe, both the college and the, and high, the school. high school. Yep, Private school, any sort of schooling. Any schooling, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, they still have those deals if you want to check those out. Uh, they have show times all afternoon. Um, yeah, they got we we've been talking about. They've got uh, some some new varieties of the beverage uh, area. That's you, right. You were super happy about the doctor. I was. I was. Yeah, they got some more pops. Got a couple of new candies back. I shouldn't say new. Uh, candies that were sold out with all the coronavirus epidemic epidemic pandemic. We finally got some candies back, so mm-hmm. check it out. Yep. And, yeah, be sure to check out their website for the show times, plan ahead, um, all that fun stuff. And with that, let's move into some number one recommends. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to let you start us off. What are you recommending this week? This week, I'm going to recommend Moonfall. A um, couple of things I really enjoyed. It's a very action-packed apocalyptic end of the world sci-fi kind of a, a film um it's got some story element or like a family bonding you know with the father and his son um but i really liked uh i just it was a, it was a fun almost epic sci-fi end of the world film um and it's got our boy john bradley in there who is uh samuel tolly from Game of Thrones, uh, he's actually on in Marry Me too as well. Coming this up, is r- yes, yeah. this is true. We forgot to mention that. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's good. It's worth a watch. It's 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 yeah, it's good. Uh, my thing I'm going to talk about this week. Uh, I, we were talking about this. I don't know if we've ever done this before, but I'm going to recommend a stand up special that I saw on Amazon Prime earlier this week. A um, couple. Many years ago, I guess I should say, when me and my family were watching America's Got Talent, one of the favorite ones we were watching was a comedian named Preacher Larson. I thought he was one of the funniest comedians I'd seen on the show in a long time. And all of a sudden this week I saw on Amazon Prime he had his debut stand-up special. He was in Chicago, and they he did a stand-up special there. I thought it was hilarious. He hasn't lost any of his touch 
Since America's Got Talent, when he was performing there, he jokes about his time on there, how he lost to a 14-year-old and everything, and Funny. everyone's like, well, are you still friends with him? I was like, I wasn't really friends with her before. <laughs> <laughs> she was competition, guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, But I, I think he's hilarious in general. Um, it's pretty clean comedy, I would say, for yeah. the most part. Um, that might have also been because I watched a Kevin Hart stand-up special, like, literally right before it, so maybe it was just clean by comparison. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was really, really funny. I think he's really, really funny. I think it's worth a check out if you want to laugh for about a little over an hour. So, uh, with that, that is going to do it for us here on this episode of Popcorn Bucket List. Uh, if you have a recommendation for us to watch, feel free to let us know here in the comments down below. Uh, we don't have a challenge for you this week, but if you have a movie trivia challenge, why don't you try and see if you can stump yeah. us? Yeah. See, you know, try shot. that out. Um, we promise we won't use Google for the first two minutes of trying to guess it, and then we'll give up, and then I'll probably use Google. Yep. But uh, for myself and Ryan Meyerberg, we'd like to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you at the movies.